And then someone brought back uh, a tape from Edinburgh that had ML on it that mm. ran, in, and ran in Lisp and was sort of, I don't remember typing the map function into this system and it told me what type it had. And I was like, whoa, how could it figure out what type this function has? That's magic. So we sort of, yeah, we need to do a different programming language, one that is typed. But, but we like lazy evaluation because that's, that's what we did, came from Sassel. So we decided, okay, we need to do a version of ML, but lazy. So that's how we decided to do lazy ML. So the first compiler for uh, lazy ML was written in this other unnamed language, F. And then once we had that running, then we threw away the old stuff because that was written in C. And then the, we sort of rewrote the Lazy ML compiler in itself so it could bootstrap. Mm. Uh, so this has nothing to do directly with the uh, functional programming, but I can mention a small anecdote about this. So this was before you had source code control systems and all these fancy things. There was the source code and that was the source code. And then you compile that to a binary and that was the binary. And so I made some change to the compiler and uh, compile that and you got the, a new binary. Didn't have the old binary. I mean, this disk space is expensive. No, the new binary doesn't quite work. And it's the only one that can compile this compiler and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> well, you use the, uh, the sort of the binary debugger, the low level debugger on the assembly code and you step through it and find, oh, there's something wrong here. If I patch the machine code a little bit, I can make this compiler work so I can, uh, yes. So after that, uh, every time we replaced the sort of the compiler binary, we did a three-step process. The compiler can recompile itself and the recompiled compiler can compile itself. And those two last ones are equal. So uh, we got a little more careful. 